morning, everyone. I am your host, Georgie Speakman, and you're either listening or watching Outlier TV. This evening we have, or I am delighted to welcome into the studio. Oh, delighted. Yeah, I am. Todd Savas. Hi. Q Thank claps you. now. Loud claps, please. Loud claps. How are you today, Todd? I'm doing swell, thank you. What about yeah, yourself? I'm very well, thank you. A little bit sniffly, but I'm great. I'm grand. Good. Thank you so much for coming down. My pleasure. Thank really, you really me. stoked to have you here. Um, I have obviously known you for just four over days. A, four days, <laughs> four minutes, for just over a decade. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. Yeah. And I've both had the opportunity to experience you firsthand as a spiritual teacher and modern mysticist. Mystic. Just a wizard <laughs> of all kinds. <laughs> That'll work. Um, and, of course, I've sent and recommended people your way that have yeah. had a really, really strong and powerful experience. And so I'm so excited to have this conversation with you tonight about many, many things. Many, many. Um, and you're hailing originally from Australia, just like myself, mm -hmm. but you've had the opportunity to explore, live and practice in New York and mm -hmm. London and yeah. obviously now L.A. Yeah. How did you commence this spiritual journey? Did you find it or did it find you? Well, I mean, my entry into it was a little bit... It was never meant to be this, I guess. I was originally raised in a Pentecostal environment and my mother... So we're talking like... The, so was Cookie. Oh, I get it. Um, so we're talking like full-on Pentecostal, like speaking in tongues, falling over from like feeling the spirit words of knowledge, um, maybe not like telling people they're going to hell with fire and damnation, but that's kind of the vibe. Um, but I never really... you're still here. You're still with us. Yes. Uh, you survived that. To this moment, there has been no hell or damnation or fire. So we're okay for the High moment. High five, babe. Um, so I was basically just getting this feeling that I was sort of more drawn and interested to things like Buddhism and shamanism and paganism and Taoism and pretty much anything that wasn't that sort of strict, organized mm -hmm. religious dynamic. And, you know, it took me some time to pull myself away from it. But eventually, like, I could sense that I was interested in that stuff. But, you know, theoretically, I should be less connected to the spirit. But I never really felt less connected. And when I was young, I was used to see things and know things about people. But my primary gift is what we call clear cognizance. So it's what we call clear knowing. So it's kind of like knowing something like you've read it in a book. So sometimes it can be a little confusing because it's sort of like I just am a smart ass kind of thing. But when you start to get a little bit older, you can see that there's no way that I could have known that thing or pre-guessed that sort of thing. Was there a particular event um, that occurred in your life that, um, aside from the upbringing in that environment, mm -hmm. that made you realize, hey, I've got a gift over and above the average everyday human? Um, it wasn't probably until I sort of pulled away from the church. I mean, when I was in the church, they used to prophesy over me that I was going to be a prophet of God and go around the world and Very prophesy. Yeah, that's it's wow. bizarre. So there um, you go. You were meant to have that experience, of course. Of absolutely. course you were, but, you know, that's yeah. quite amazing. Yeah, but I didn't really get my own sort of uh, real understandings of it until much later when I, mm -hmm. people were coming to me when I consciously wasn't doing the Christian thing sure. and I was more so doing the spiritual thing. And I could sense the healing in you and uh, well, I mean hopefully but more so they just wanted nature. to know what I what I had to say and then right. that was like okay so now more people wanted to know what I'd say and that's sort of how it progressed so how did you come to realize because you kicked off a somewhat of a corporate journey for a minute you mm -hmm. worked in advertising for a while yep. um, what was the pivotal point in time that made you transition out of that whole sphere of operating into full-time spirituality uh, so panic attacks <laughs> uh, <laughs> Suicidal ideation. <laughs> it's a real catch theme these days. Um, <laughs> no panic attacks. Pretty much, I was in a. I was working in online and advertising, and I just continued to feel like waves of pressure and stress because I just fundamentally didn't want to be there. Didn't resonate. No. And then I actually went off and studied fashion. So I was going to be, and then worked as a stylist for a while. But the universe then, at that point, had very strict plans, and so everything I was coming up with and trying to do it was just block door, block door, block door until I sort of came out as being a spiritual, at that time it was, I think, spiritual healer, I think. Um, so it wasn't until I fully embraced that sort of part of the journey that things moved forward. Because you've also studied Reiki and other integrative mm -hmm. um, practices as well, which, yeah. yeah. I'm kind of like having a great big pot and grabbing a whole bunch of things and throwing it in and stirring it around and then seeing what happens. 
Jesus. <laughs> Broad Excellent. church, as we'd say. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I have had a reading with you yeah. and you have your own deck of cards. Would you tell us about how you came to realise the deck of cards and how they differ from other commercial decks that you're able to buy off the shelf? Um, so primarily people think of tarot cards yeah. or guidance cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that could be like I've angel had many cards of these. or whatever. Yeah, I love Correct. my little angel yeah. cards. Yeah. Uh, so tarot is based on a very specific system. There's four different suits and so it breaks it up into... Essentially it represents uh, each different step of a query, mm-hmm. like a person's mm-hmm. journey. Um, My cards differ in the sense that there's no organized system per se, so they'd be more in the realm of like guidance cards. Mm -hmm. Most guidance decks have about 44 cards, mine have about 370. So I do believe that bigger is better. And for me... Don't we all, honey? Yeah. uh, For (laughs) me, like I I enjoy that sort of idea of having so many different messages and, and then no's and yes's basically. So then there is no room for things to kind of be like, oh, this one message applies to 50 different things. Like in my deck, it it is literally what it is. So there are cards like you're still in your love, your ex is still in love with you, but will not admit it. And that's such a specific type of experience that you can't really see as bluntly put if it wasn't like that. When you were able to receive and download Mm -hmm. um, the vision of four, four and of the cards, what were there? Was it clear that it was sort of 370 different moments and situations mm-hmm. and circumstances or did it kind of organically unfold in time? Uh, so after I had like been using the tarot for a long ca- long time and other sorts of cards, I so the whole idea of making my own cards came from my teacher. And my teacher, I don't know if we've ever spoken about this, she, uh, it, the character in The Matrix, the Oracle, is yes. based on her. Yes, yes. So she has always made her own cards and she basically Beautiful. gets like playing cards and sticks like pictures from like women's idea and like that sort of stuff on Mm -hmm. them so Mm -hmm. one card might have brad pitt on it and the next card might have angeline jolie so she always did them like that and she always said you would make your own cards but when i Mm. started doing them it was always like uh this is for this this is for this and then i had like a large amount and i started but then when i'd work with people it'd kind of be this moment where like oh i wish i had a card that fit this experience and then it just sort of kept building out yeah beautiful absolutely beautiful Well, you've, you've been now in LA for almost five years, Correct. I believe. I'm very curious to learn here and sort of understand from your perspective how the different sort of levels of spirituality or how the energy differs in these different cities between the Australias, the Londons, New York and LA. What's been your experience today and how have you adapted your ability to tap into different information and, and healing practices to ad- adapt to the cultures? I think that the most interesting sort of dynamic that I had as a, like an understanding or breakthrough surrounding that was sort of relating each city to having a different type of astrological principle to it. Yep. So uh, for me, New York is very Capricorn and Capricorn is, as, as a sign is I have to work harder. I haven't worked hard enough. Everyone else around me is achieving more. You have done nothing. You need to keep going and keep going and money, 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 achievement. So that's why in New York, everything is basically geared around career and making yeah. money and excelling. Uh, Capricorn are also super hard on themselves, so they don't know how to actually give self-care. Take, yeah, take so, a lot off. So whereas LA, I describe it as a Neptune city. So Neptune is basically the, the sort of planet that uh, rules over spirituality and art and creativity and alcoholism and highs and <laughs> I lows. I know nothing about that whatsoever. And so it's everything intangible to it. So it's also basically the planet of dreams and nightmares. Yes. So well, I think we can all relate to, to that. Yeah. Yeah. So every place has a, every place is craving something, or people yeah. that come here are craving something, and it's just understanding the place from which they're coming from with that, with that crave. Awesome, and you've you've been you've been in a lot of media, um, mm. on and offline, um, print, uh, TV, digital, all that kind of stuff. Um, the morning show in Australia, yep. Good Day LA here, Extra TV, E Online, Young Hollywood, a bunch. Um, of others and you have a regular column in is it the santa monica observer, observer. yep and so, hollywood through six. And awesome so i definitely wanted to talk about a couple of the articles that you've you've written Less. of late <laughs> <laughs> however however in the meantime you were um you featured um quite quickly overnight in in a bunch of different media mm-hmm. channels on a bunch of different media channels as a result of this Perspective prediction yeah. um, of of um, uh, Jenna Tatum's or Dwayne yeah. Dwan's um, sort of situation. Yeah. 
How often do these predictions arise with people and they come, you know, they come back to you and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, you were right. Like, are you, is this one of your fortes to predict? Um, so I have a little bit of a... Are you a an, predictionist? Are you just making up words? Huh? Yes. <laughs> we call it a precog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can definitely predict. Um, I have, a, I, I play an interesting game with that as a concept because it's so easy to slide into ego with that. And so as... I don't like to talk about that particular, like, I do this all the time because then it's like... Oh yeah, I know the future all the time. When right. in reality, I only know what I get told. Okay. So my teacher always used to say to me, "We are never meant to be right. What we're meant to be is basically say what I have to tell you, because from that we know what your action is going to be, which is going to be the thing you need to do." Mm -hmm. So whatever that dynamic is, that's sort of where I come at it. I just sort of say whatever I get told by the universe mm -hmm. and trust that that's going to be the thing that pushes you in whichever direction is necessary. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. I had a really interesting experience recently with um, Riz, who's like a channel, mm -hmm. yep. uh, psychic healer, all that kind of stuff. And uh, his sessions were incredible. You know, people, people had people in tears and all that kind of stuff. Um, and his, his uh, insights, he was channeling Red Eagle at the time. Mm -hmm. And I found his insights to be like brutally accurate. It was quite crazy. And they're all really positive. So thank, praise the Lord for that. Um, but he was also able to get insights um, from, you know, channel different entities and energies mm -hmm. and things like that. Do you have a particular source or entities or channels that you channel? <laughs> um, so some people really like to define through specific identity like that. And I think when I first started out, that was really like interesting and fun. And now... Now I don't really go into the specifics of who mm -hmm. it is. I just kind of feel it as though it's just one great big party up there that is sending me Whoa. information. Yeah, because like fundamentally, it's not really that important if I tell you that, oh, Doris is here and Doris is telling you this, or hey, Peter says this to you. It's just because we as humans like that classification dynamic and that sort of characterization. Um, but. For me personally, it's just easier not to worry about the who's and just sort of say what's whatever's coming. Well, I think what I like most about your practice and approach is that, and we've talked about this new sort of, we touched on it very briefly earlier by way of a description or is, is modern day yeah. um, spirituality and being able to adapt the approach for the individual. Todd, you have referred to yourself as a modern uh, spirit, no. Modern mystic. Modern, I want to say mystic. You want a what? I say I'm one mysticist. Because that's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say it. I ain't no word. Okay. Todd, how do you apply this concept of modern spirituality to your practice? Mm. How do you apply it to each and every single individual? And do you find they understand, they already have an understanding themselves of what that, that means to them? Okay, so I think that the easiest way to come at this firstly is like the key difference between like religion and then spirituality. For me, spirituality is your own connection or your own expression of connecting to the universe. Yes. Whereas religion is like a formula or a program or a system that's basically given to you, which you mm -hmm. have to adhere mm -hmm. to, to hopefully experience a connection to the universe. Mm -hmm. So then when it comes to modern mysticism or spirituality, my thing is really helping people understand that you're probably already expressing spiritual connection or expressing some sort of uh, understanding or connection to the universe in your own way, sure. but to help you create a language surrounding that. Right. So that might be, you've got no idea what your intuition is, but every day you do this one thing and it's so creatively inspiring and it, and it awakens you while you do it. So modern mysticism is really helping people understand that there's spirituality in everything and then creating a conversation surrounding that. And then from that, giving people extra tools to be able to use that in everyday life, as opposed to you giving them things that they'll never, never do or really never want to do. Right, right, right. Um, That's this is about really updating it, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And also then creating the conversation surrounding, you know, it's not evil to drink, it's not evil to this, because that's all old programming. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's about creating a place where you can feel within yourself. Whether It's about getting fucked up, guys. You can just go for it. No, I'm kidding. Sure. <laughs> um, and it's just about creating that space where you're responsible for making those decisions yourself as opposed to having someone enforce them on you so then therefore you haven't created that choice yourself. Yeah. I'm curious to find, I've always wondered this, how do you manage your own spiritual journey 
amongst the experience of giving and helping others understand their own? Um, it w- it's it was harder when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but now it almost feels as though the ante is being upped in the world. And so definitely the pressure has been intensified, I guess we'd say most recently. But what I've really been noticing is that there are, there's always parallels between what I'm experiencing and what clients are coming to me. And so then therefore I'm able to literally say something to them that was explained to me by the universe, just literally they, before they walked in or there's always some sort of symmetry between it. Yeah, and sure. so, you know, like, you look at someone experiencing something and you see them as an extension of you anyway. So they're processing what you're, you're processing too. Um, but sometimes it can get a lot, especially when, you know, you have random people on Instagram messaging you saying, I'm desperate, I need help. And it's like, you Aww. need to see a professional because yeah. I can't, like, that's not how this works. Sure. You know what I mean? So yeah. it can be, it, look, it's not, it's not easy, let's say, but you know, that's what a mission is as opposed absolutely. to just, oh, I want to just be this. It's not like that. You've got to have a real calling for it. Yeah, absolutely. You wrote a really important um, article uh, recently in the mm. Santa Monica Observer and uh, it's quite timely also just that we're having this dialogue and yeah. that I was able to have this dialogue last Monday evening with uh, actor Nicholas Pinnock, who's a beautiful actor. He's a lovely film, TV, theatre actor. Um, but he also does a lot of charity work for mainly or cancer, but also um, charities around sort of me- mental illness, health awareness and so forth. Yeah. And he was really transparent in sharing his own journey through that. Mm. Um, what, are, what are some of the bigger issues and themes that you're, you're seeing continually emerge? I mean, I think it's, it's wonderful that people are becoming more comfortable, I think, in being vulnerable mm. and sharing and coming forward. But then we also see, as you wrote in the article, these, these suicides by unsuspecting human beings mm. that in our, in, I guess, in everyday humans' universe, you yeah. would see as uh, successful, some, successful or, or form of perfection, yeah. having a perfect fashion career or TV traveling career or whatever it yeah. might be. An enviable experience. Of course. Mm. So what are some of the themes that are arising for you? What are you what's your opinion uh, on, on today's current environment when it comes to human beings, mental health and wellness. I, so, and this is a really fascinating sort of conversation that's starting to happen because like I'm really noticing that like people are now delving into emotional health, but like the key that we're all missing is this concept of like soul health. Because when we talk about emotions and we talk about mental, like they're top layers, but then like the soul itself is craving for something. And that is real connection. And that's what's really missing in today's age because everyone is like under this illusion that being connected online and having your friends online, but then never needing to actually connect with your friends and never having to experience like physical touch with someone. All of those things have become less important. Mm -hmm. And that also means that the need to actually check in with people, but to experience what's going on with each other, that's lessened as well. And so... Like that for me is a conversation that really needs to start happening. Like, like not just, are you okay? Because whenever someone says, are you okay? Of course, you're like, oh, yeah, of course, everything's fine. And, and it's all, people often don't really want the real answer in that, in that moment when they are Never. asking, how, how are you or how are you doing? Of course, she's going to say, good, great, fine, whatever, because... No one wants to be the sad one. You want to be the sad one, but also if you want to hear the truth, (laughs) it's going to take a minute. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. And look, that that in and of itself is a hard thing because the reality is most people don't have the tools to be able to assist someone in that moment either. But I think that the, the real issue that's been coming up, and look, I've never had so many honest conversations with like even just friends where everyone is now sharing like, and it's not necessarily people aren't saying they want to kill themselves but there's a real sense of basically being like this is real hard work here like i really wouldn't mind just going to sleep and being in heaven tomorrow <laughs> and it's like and it's like that's honest well, yeah you know I, mean, what I mean listen we i'm sure we all feel that way yeah. whether we actually ever act upon the suicidal ideation whether it's like said in dark humor yeah. or in from a place of deep deep hurt and pain yeah versus you know actually going through with it in your opinion, what does happen on the other side? Like, if I was to... No, I should not ask that question. Hey, you can if you want. That's a good question. It is a great question. 
Because there's this theory that mm. if you take your life, you you have to come back as a younger soul or some something like that. It's really you go go to hell because you opted out or, or something. It depends on what school of thought, whether it's a religious or spiritual one. Mm. What's your opinion? Um, so definitely if you take your own life, there's extra karma that you're going to accumulate. That's the one too, um, the extra karma thing. It's more so from a position of like from the spirit's perspective, you as a soul, you look at everything in life and you go, what haven't I experienced before? So last lifetime I was a princess. So this lifetime I don't want to be a princess. I'm going to be the opposite of that because that creates contrast. Right. So when we look at the concept of like, oh, you kill yourself, then it's more so like your soul leaves and goes, oh, damn it. <laughs> Wait, I want to uh, come back. Now I've all those things that I didn't accomplish that mm-hmm. time. I'm gonna try and do them all again in the next one because, like, that's all it is. It's not about punishment as much as you're just here to expand experience. through experience. Yeah, yeah. And if you have cut, because being here is rare. There are so mm-hmm. many more souls mm-hmm. than wanting to than are able to listen. Be here. I, 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 so I mean, when you see so many of your friends miscarry, for example, you realize what a gift yeah. beings, you know, babies and, and human beings are. Yep. And what it can, what it can take in a woman's experience to actually bring life into yeah. planet Earth, and then how naturally. Um, and how equally flawed we all are in that we're simple beings. Yeah. And the only thing that really divides us is circumstance, situation, you know, culture, whatever. Yeah. Um, but we all ultimately have a little heart, soul, mind, and, and body. Yeah. And that is a gift, but that because we're simple, you know, we can't, we're not elevating. I don't, I don't know if anyone's elevating around the place, are they? I'm elevating right now. <laughs> But we call it the or we call it the transporting to other dimensions. Well, can happen. are they? Yeah, sure. Um, we call it the illusion of separation. So basically, when we're in spirit, we're experiencing a dynamic where we there is no separation. Yep. We feel everyone. We do. And then Such we come tactile. here, and immediately the first thing we sense is disconnection. So right. we sense loneliness, not from each other, but of course that's there, but it's loneliness from what was up there, which was just constant connection. That's so really the human journey then is to learn how to reconnect with That's spirit. what it is. Yeah. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, it's an uh, easy four-step process. No, <laughs> like the, the reality <laughs> is... is Buy my $10,000 four-step program and... <laughs> This um, is just an infomercial, guys. Yeah, one eight hundred Todd Savas. Um, <laughs> so it's what it really comes down to is like basically disassembling all of the human stories that keep you in between expressing true connection. Yeah, and so that's like you know fears in whichever flavor they come in, and so that's the work. And so each soul's individual experience is based surrounding whatever they wanted to get triggered by, heal, and fix, and all those sorts of things. So. It could be through relationships, it could be through work, it could be through health or family, whatever the case may be. But it's that journey of disassembling the illusion of those things to discover that, oh, I actually am connected and I am connected if I only just stop focusing on the lies that are going on in the head. That resonates a lot with me. I can relate to that. And I think a lot of human beings can if you actually just put it to them so pragmatically. And that's another strength that you have is, in my experience of you, um, when you're practicing is that you, you you break things down in a really simple way for us simple humans to understand. Well, thank you. I'm, well, it's not just simple. It's anyone, you know what I mean? Like, it's easy to overcomplicate things because that yes. way it makes it seem like we're so knowledgeable. But at the core of it, everything is just really simple and it should be returned to that. And that, for me, is what spirituality is. Yeah. It should be simple. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So, we live here in Los Angeles. We do. Tinseltown, Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um first or second largest entertainment capital in the world yeah. outside of, you know, Mumbai or maybe Goa or somewhere else these days and maybe the Middle East. No, I'm making um. that up. God knows <laughs> where else. Um, but, yeah, we're fact essentially check. the... <laughs> where? Fact check. Fact check. Fact check. Oh, fact check. Uh, there's a journalist, a researcher around here somewhere. <laughs> I like cookie. Yeah, sure. um, Cookies on it. But it, it's such an all-consuming town. We, you, you sort of likened Los Angeles or rather the energy here to be a Neptune-like yep. energy or place yep. where there's this dichotomous nature of, of good and bad, dark and light mm. and all that kind of stuff. So where your dreams can come to fruition here, everyone can also experience some really dark they're times nightmares. here and their yep. nightmares, right? What is... Is spirituality and how is it? how is it amplified? A lot of people give Los Angeles shit, you know, mm. for 
Um, you got people that talk about it positively and say it really is a city of angels because you can be anyone you want to be here. You can evolve and recreate and, mm. and all that kind of stuff without judgment. Mm. But on the flip side, there's just so much shit here, so much falsity and narcissism and, and all those kinds of things. Arrogance, ego. Yeah, all mm. those beautiful, fun things. Mm-hmm. Um, how How does that differ in terms of having to educate or the types of humans you encounter, all that kind of stuff. So I think if we sort of look at the sort of dynamics between New York and here, it's the easiest because they're so opposite in and of themselves. When it comes to New York, people are needing to come back to how to truly self-care, almost so listen what their heart really needs. In LA, it's a little bit of a different dynamic because this is where people have had to buy into their deepest delusions to follow their quote unquote dreams. Some may be real destined and led and others might be just this sort of guise of ego masking itself as there's something special and unique about you, which there may well be. But here is a different dynamic because a lot of times people are really requiring a dose of reality. In reality meaning what's true. No, not here. No, never. never <laughs> not in Hollywood. All. Um, <laughs> so, like, that's that's really the interesting thing about here. It's, like, really this careful balance between true, what is true, what is real, and then what is also dream slash illusion slash delusion. Sure. And that's that's primarily what you notice surrounding this sort of thing. It's that need to, like, check. You know what I mean? It must be really challenging for people who are pursuing creative careers yeah. to decipher whether it's a dream or a, just a delusion and yeah. their dreams are attainable versus the delusion, which is that you're delusional and, and possibly never going to achieve that dream. Absolutely. H- how do you give advice to those that are sort of stuck in a place of, do you, can you see, do you have messages? Yeah. Can you, yeah. Uh, look, the thing is, is yes. it, it comes down to what I'm told that they can handle, but also what they're oh, ready to hear. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because I can say X, Y, Z, but also the reality is, is they're exactly where they need to be as per their plan. Mm-hmm. So for me to like leap 24 steps ahead to tell them what they needed to understand for themselves through trial, tribulation, and then breakthrough, I would have stolen that entire experience from them. So that's more so where I'm coming at. In this exact moment in time, what is the tool that I'm being told you require or what what do you need to hear now to keep you going to your next step? And that might not be to pierce the bubble unless they requested to have the bubble pierced. Sure. Okay. And then what what tools do you um, suggest and encourage people to sort of lean on and into if they are struggling with the dream versus delusion in mm. a dialogue and external experience as well as the suicidal ideation and, and mm. all that kind of stuff that we just touched on before. So that's a whole lot all in one question. Um, You've got five seconds. Okay, ah, and five. So <laughs> I, the first thing, especially now, I think the most important tool that I wish everyone would know is there is no new modality or new tool or technique to fix everything. That's complete and under illusion. Right now, if you're feeling a lot, it's because we talk about this as like the planet ruled like Pluto. Pluto is the god of the underworld. So he is playing. Is he? he Cheeky is. little bugger. And he, is he blue? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so he basically in a chart represents everything that's hidden and under the surface. So he's moving around in the heavens right now and sort of, um, I guess the best way that we're describing at the moment is bringing up all of the wounds that you thought you dealt with, but in reality, you just put a lot of plastering over the top of it and thought everything was fine. So this period is really about bringing up the deepest, darkest stuff that is ready to be healed within you. Mm. And so the spirit has constantly been saying to me, there's no shortcut to this experience because we're all hoping that, oh, we can do this right now and this is going to get me out of this thing. But the ones that are going to have the biggest breakthrough in this moment are the ones that are kind of going to sit in the... the, Are we swearing on this? Yeah, absolutely. I swear all the motherfucking time. The shittiness of the feeling so that it can make you feel this way so that you can go, okay, I am feeling this way and that's okay and that'll pass. If I need to cry or vomit, I will. And then the, the only tool that they're really giving at the moment is breath. Because focus oh breath God, is so is the key to sort of shifting breath. Yes, that's so interesting because I learned the breath lesson many, many, many years ago, like mm. a long time ago, and I was like, wow, all you got to do is breathe. Yeah. Funny that. Yeah. And I found that when I focused on breath, 
I was able to just, it was almost like 20 meditation sessions in one. Absolutely. By actually just staying present to your breath. Yep. And I hear people that are... <laughs> Shallow breath like this all the time. All the time. I'm yep. going, oh my God, you're about to give yourself a heart attack. Just yep. take a deep breath, connect with that breath, sustain that breath as yep. long as you consciously can. Yeah. And you will see and feel yourself and everything 50 billion times clearer and it's okay to breathe and feel through the breath yeah and you can still be in a hurry you yeah. can still be doing your busy day and you might still feel average yeah but that breath is the anchoring part of it i can't remember what made me come back to it because i do meditate i would say 96 percent of my mornings mm. um but when i did come back to breath i was like oh my god God, hello. Breath, I remember you. Yeah. And I'm a little bit tight chest at the moment because I'm mildly asthmatic, but I, I, it, it just, I was like, oh, there you are. Great. The drugs I've been looking for for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> funnily enough, I had it all along. So it's often the simple things. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Are there some other tools? So, I mean, after breath, then basically we're coming down to acceptance. And acceptance is the key of basically being able to observe everything in this moment and just accepting things as they are. Mm -hmm. So that really includes like, I accept how I'm seated here and that's perfect. I ex I'm accepting what I'm wearing right now and that's perfect. I'm accepting however long I'm going to be in this moment for and that's perfect. So giving acceptance, acceptance. to the presence. Do you find that with acceptance though, that's then challenged with, um, I need an answer, I need resolution. But then you're not accepting. You know, but like how, yeah. for how long do you accept for until so basically you're never going to get clarity or a breakthrough while you're in angst so the whole idea of the there breath you go. So and that's, that's the money is like i think the um the human predisposition would be to react in a different way to acceptance yeah. which is the need to control yep. label have the answer resolve get rid of whatever yeah but if you just bring yourself back to understanding that that then causes angst because you're trying to control yeah and, if, and look when, especially when people are type A or even they they just overthink I'm everything. I'm not type A. Um, <laughs> um, but most people will go into this anyway. And like, you know, you're laying down in bed and you can't sleep because you're thinking about everything. That's because the mind is created to problem solve. But the reality is things that are going on in your, in your life, if you could find the solution to all of them, you already would have. Right. So the mind needs to know that you don't need it to keep searching for those things. Yeah. And you'll discover them when you're naturally meant to. Right. But in the meantime, that capacity to just accept where you are in this moment helps your mind to sort of go, oh, okay, you don't need me to sure. work out everything. Yeah. So. No, it's funny. I had a, a little download myself on Catalina Island uh -huh. uh, about 18 months ago. Mm. And it was just so incredible because I could just see humanity and human beings so clearly like oh, oh my god we are meant to be flawed mm -hmm. we're here for this tactile human experience in other human. words we're supposed to be human we're meant we're to not... fall over we're meant to cry we're meant to yeah, yeah. we're not meant to be um infallible not nirvana when you're evolving Enlightened. we're not meant to necessarily be here we're not meant to achieve enlightenment that's not where he what no, we're here i mean for. that's that's the idealistic goal but in and of itself that can be a game as well and sure I and mean, this concept of good and bad energy mm -hmm. um and and the fact that we're just a con in a constant state of this dichotomous nature of yep. everything yep within ourselves and that reward payoff of like if you're good you'll reincarnate into a better life no that in and of itself is sort of like avoiding the whole point well, it feels threatening yeah and now i have to like not sat all night and, and dance to whatever hour or not drink or not swear or not like whatever and that's true spirituality would say if it's true within you and you're not hurting someone else then that's an expression of what's real for you mm, very interesting Okay, and so then what are some of the other themes of the rest of the year that we should be consciously aware of for 2018 and, and perhaps things we can look forward to in 2019? Okay, so when we're... So I look at the year as a theme by looking at the Chinese horoscope. Sure. So this year we're in the year of the dog. And when I was sort of tuning into this and Cookie. doing the... Cookie, it's your year. Um, I was tuning into the sort of feeling of this year and I kept getting the words rabid dog. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, my God, I have... Oh my, okay, we need to talk about this afterwards. Okay. Um, so basically the spirit was sort of showing me that theme, so dog as a sign is loyal and sort of great friend and reliable and all these beautiful things. But then in like when I do readings and a dog comes up, it's always this dynamic of 
you need to watch out for a dog because basically otherwise they will turn into a rabid dog if you don't look after them. So the theme of this year is basically like you're going to see all of the people that have been downtrodden finding their voice and turning what? into rabid dogs and getting their power back. This is, uh, I'm telling you, so effing weird mm. because I can't in recent weeks erase this this image of this rabid dog coming towards yep. Cookie and I. Mm. I've got no idea where it's, where it's come from and what mm. it means, but it's so funny that you've just said you're the yep. dog. I mean, I do have a bit of PTSD post Cookie's dog attacks. Uh -huh. He's been attacked like twice over the last month mm -hmm. and the second time he got attacked on a hike, mm -hmm. he was squealing and screaming, crying for mm -hmm. like moments, you know, a couple of minutes afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, he was obviously going through his own little trot. This is my dog, by the way, Cookie. It's a yeah. fluffy, stuffed, live. He is a real dog as well, and not an imaginary he, friend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he told you, he told you, like, I don't know, we've, we've spoken about this before. He's not real. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's no one else here. <laughs> No, but it's really bizarre. And I think, I don't know if it's because I just keep, I'm now paranoid about seeing a scary dog come around the corner because that's kind of how it happened on the hike where I thought I saw a Labrador, but it actually was an American pit bull, mm -hmm. bulldoggy type scary dog mm -hmm. um, that would like to eat cookie for, mm -hmm. for a snack. Um, what is that? What the fuck? Excuse my language, but what does that mean? So I actually am also getting the sense that the spirit is trying to very keenly explain this dynamic in the year for you and reflect it back on yourself. Yeah. Because this is also going to be a period for you to be able to reclaim your voice. Well, it certainly is. In, in all dynamics where you've hashtag, felt as though... Hashtag, watch this face. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, I'm yelling at people today. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and that, in a, because basically those dynamics with your dog, they reflect whatever's happening with you anyway. So that's sort of the message that you're getting because it's reflecting back and it's exactly that dynamic. Mm. So when you can shift that awareness that like there are no dogs that are going to be attacking us because my energy is stronger than all of that. But if you're sort of sliding into that fear stuff, then you're going to keep attracting it to you. Because Very interesting. You're going to be attracting it so that you can then rise above it. That's really interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. I'm definitely astute for cookie every time yeah. we're like going around a corner or something like that. So yeah. I'm trying to, I'm like, where does that come from? Why am I seeing that? But I'm going to try and shift that. Now yeah. that I'm aware of what the symbolism is behind yeah. that sort of like lesson vision, yeah. etc. Because dogs are, or animals in general are an extension of our own animus and what's happening within us as well. So how he is behaving and feeling is going to be in part connected to your lesson and dynamic as well. Oh, well, thank Christ you're perfect, Cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you have for those aspiring to a career similar to yourself? Um, how, how do they get started? How do they tap into their inner tuition? Um, inner intuition. Okay, so I'm really of an old school style when it comes to this stuff. And now sort of spirituality is becoming real faddish. And I would never recommend like suddenly deciding to want to embark on this career unless you really feel a calling for it. Right. Because course. like it's not a job where there's necessarily any payoff. It, it, it could but like the the dynamics or depends what the payoff is to exactly. you what that but means to that, you like now people are looking for very specific payoffs unfortunately like fame money adulation this this and that in the olden days to be a spiritual teacher would be to live in a cave people may come and see you and maybe bring you a fruit and then ask yeah. for your advice no, i so, could bring you fruit yeah <laughs> so like I think that firstly, it's different in other careers in the sense that it really has to be a full heart call. Yeah. That would be the most important thing. Sure. And then second to that, once you know that it is for you, then find like a dynamic, whether it be like you want to go through reading or healing or meditation or whatever, but find something that you're really passionate about because the passion is going to make you want to learn everything about it. And that's really the key thing. It's got to be led with that sort of desire Otherwise, it You're becomes and really breathe, boring. Breathing at twenty four seven, yeah, yeah, uh, just obviously an intrinsic part of you. It's undeniable, right? Yeah. Um, and then, last but not least, I'm curious to find out how you find uh, the presence of social media because you did reference or reference it in your your article with the uh, Santa Monica Observer. Yeah. That it does have a more prominent um, role in our lives. Obviously, we all know that. I mean, yep. ding dong. But it's how do you feel? Ding that, dong. Ding dong. How do you feel that this um, supports your journey mm -hmm. as a spiritual teacher? 
And how do you feel people can positive, positively leverage the presence of social media? That's a tough question. I, I get that that's kind of like almost... How do you answer that? strategy now. Yeah, how do you answer that? But like, yeah, I mean, just your take on... on so I think we'll, let's do positive and negative because sure. I feel like they're really important. Yeah. The positive is that at any point you could find any type of new information from anywhere, whether it be... You know, like from some person in India or me while you're sitting in Botswana, like whatever the case may Mm -hmm. be, that sort of limitation of space that's sort of been taken away. The negative to this is being so plugged into that because it basically, you know, I wrote about it in my article. The Spirit sort of explained it like the more that we are fixated on the notifications coming from our phone, the less we're able to get the notifications from the universe. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a good one. Yeah. And so I was sort of like, oh, turn off Instagram notifications. Because like they, they, what people don't understand is that we should be going to sleep and turning off our phones and our computers and everything else Definitely. because we're aware of those signals coming and There's going. There's all the positive ne- negative ions yeah. and stuff in that. And so you as a being are a conductor and a receiver and a signal sender in and of yourself. The higher intelligence, yeah. human intelligence. And then also we... the part of you that's connected to every single other person What's really sad about this whole like connected, quote unquote, through social media, which really is not connected, is that now we're not feeling the connection that we've got with one another because usually nothing, nothing. (laughs) Usually if someone was going through something in beyond, like when we didn't have these sort of connections, uh, as in like online connections, we would be feeling the pull towards someone more. Yeah. But now, because we're more concerned with, oh, did I get a message? Oh, no one's messaged me. Oh, whatever the case may be, that trains our body to sort of um, be addicted. Prioritize by the way. those. Pri- prioritize, but also be addicted. Absolutely. That's why, yeah, I had a little staycation just this past weekend, and it was delicious and divine. Like having my phone on silent all weekend, mm-hmm. leaving it back in the hotel room or in my bag, not looking at it for hours on yep. end. You can feel the difference. Just being. So do you do digital detoxes and, and do you, you know, recommend doing that? Um, well, so I post a message every single day online. Where can um, people find your messages? At, at Todd Savas, T-O-D-D-S-A-V-V-A-S. T-O-D-D-S-A-V-V-A-S. Yeah. Um, so, like, I would love to, but, like, the people that... Thankfully, I can help people through those messages and people say, this has been so helpful for me. So until like I have someone that can handle all of that stuff for me and I don't even need to worry about putting that online, then I can't kind of just suddenly stop giving these messages because like that's, you know, part of what I'm asked to do. Yeah. Um, but definitely I've noticed such a big difference by just limiting what's, what is on my phone, um, like things that aren't really necessary. And like I said, turning off Instagram notifications so that I'm not just bombarded with stuff. Instead, I have to consciously go, okay, now I'm going to engage with that. And sort of just not needing to check, not needing to be looking at it, not needing to do any of that sort of stuff. And that's the only way to start detoxing all the extra stuff that's in the sure. head. Yeah. You've also done, um, and you're a great Feng Shui practitioner. Can oh, I call thanks. you that? Yeah. Um, what are some little hot tips for around the house um, in uh, addition to what you just shared that are great for an everyday person in their little home? Well, I mean, it's, so basically with Feng Shui, you actually look at the individual animal sign and that oh, then wow. determines and it changes every year. Okay. So universally, I mean, like it really depends on what's happening. Um, but uh, my recommendations of crystals that everyone should have, uh, citrine. So citrine is a sort of... Um, goldy sort of one they call it the merchant stone what's good about it is that it can never hold a negative charge so if it's exposed to negative energy it automatically turns that energy to positive oh, so it's great for attracting it. wealth yeah and it also just oh jesus energy. i need to fill my whole goddamn house with that one yeah uh, and black onyx if you're feeling emotional <laughs> or overwhelmed it will protect you and keep you sort of guarded against mm. extra stuff mm. um and then a good old amethyst amethyst is one of the most uh, sort of spiritually aligned ones so by holding on to it and just meditating or focusing on what you're wanting to sort of clarify with your own energy that'll uplift that as well awesome well thank you they're incredible hot tips as always an incredible conversation with you todd thank you georgie and everyone can find you on twitter instagram facebook anywhere else uh uh yeah that's all pretty much yeah Yeah. is there anything else yet (laughs) and todd's uh situated in in the west hollywood area yep 
So if you do want to book an appointment or learn more about him, you can also visit your website, right? Yep. Which is just Todsavis.com. Perfect. And you can find him there to book appointments. So thank you so much for listening and or watching Outlier TV. I'm your host, Georgie Speakman, Todd Savas. Thank you. And we'll see you again next week.